Today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the notion of a universal cone and express it in a very precise formal way. So far what I've done is I've drawn pictures like this in various pretty colours. That's not a very precise way of doing mathematics now, is it? Um, even if it is quite pretty. So here's this diagram which I've miraculously moved down to the bottom left-hand corner of the board. Remember what we're doing is we're trying to take a limit over this part of the this diagram down here in some category. And what we do is we take a cone over it, and remember that a cone means you have a vertex together with maps to every object in your diagram, and you want it to be a universal cone. So that says that given any other cone, like this orange one, for example, um, there's a unique factorization, this pink map, going from V to U. So U is for universal here. This one, this blue cone is supposed to be my universal one, and it's universal among all cones. So there's this unique factorization. So what we need to do in order to make this very formal is first say what a diagram is, then say what a cone over it is, and then say what it means for it to be universal. So first of all, what is a diagram? A diagram, well, we think we know what a diagram in a category is, right? We get a bunch of arrows and we sort of draw them. But what is it really? A diagram in C um, of shape... I, this is a blackboard bold I, um, is a functor D, the diagram, from I to C. So here I is also a category. I is a category, and we're usually interested in it being either small or finite. So what does this functor do? Well, it takes this it takes this category and it kind of puts it inside C. So what it's doing there is it's identifying the diagram in C that you're interested in. For example, if you start with um, if I is this diagram in this category, okay, this is a very small category. It's just got three objects. And it's got a morphism going this way and a morphism going this way. And when we draw very small diagrams like um, categories like this, we don't usually bother drawing the identity morphisms everywhere. Um, but we're supposed to understand that there's one here and that there's one here and there's one here as well. So if I is like that, then what's a functor from this category to C? Well, a functor from this category to C is going to be three objects of C um, and a morphism going here and a morphism going here. Um, and you may remember, I hope, that taking a limit over a diagram of that shape in a category is what's called pullback. And so technically what we're doing is when, whenever we draw a diagram like this in a category C, what we've really done is we've identified a functor from I to C. So you can pick your shape category to be anything, anything you want. If I is... If I is just a pair of objects with no morphisms between them, then what we get is a pair of objects in C. And a limit over that is going to be a product. Um, if we take two objects and a pair of parallel arrows, then what we get when we do the functor to it is it's going to identify two objects of C and a pair of actual parallel arrows in C. And remember, if we take a limit over that, what we get is an equalizer. So this is supposed to give you idea, the idea that this sort of mess of arrows down here that I drew can be encapsulated as a functor from I to C, where I is a little category that all it does, its entire existence is there to give you the shape of the diagram that you want. Okay, so that's how we say what a diagram is. Now, you might think that's a bit convoluted, but it gets quite exciting at this point, because now we get to say what a cone over it is, and this is quite, well, exciting. So let's see, let's get rid of this. So a cone over this diagram is going to be some natural transformation from somewhere to somewhere else. So remember, let's just remind ourselves what a cone is. It's an object U equipped with a morphism from U to every object in the diagram such that a whole load of triangles commute. Now, a natural, a natural transformation is a bunch of morphisms such that a whole load of squares commute. And you might think, hmm, a square is a triangle. Except that a square is a triangle if you just collapse it a bit. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take a functor 
delta. So we're going to we're going to take a functor delta that sends everything to you. So the functor you start with is just a very boring functor, but a very useful one that sends absolutely everything to you. Your other functor sends everything to this stuff, and then your natural transformation is going to give you this cone. Okay, so now we define a functor delta sub u. The little u there, subscript, is to tell us where everything is going to go. So this is a functor from i to c that sends absolutely everything. So um, it sends everything in i to our object u, for all i in i. And all morphisms, therefore, have to go to the identity. Okay. So it's called the constant functor. And then a cone over this diagram with vertex u, u is precisely a natural transformation from this constant functor at u to our diagram d. So now why on earth is this true? Um, let's just see what this natural transformation gives us. So it gives us, for every object of i, a morphism, so this is, for all objects i in i, a component of the natural transformation. So it has to go from this of i to that of i. Now this of i is just u. And this of i is d of i. I should write this as capital I. That's better. Okay. And so we can call this something. Let's call it, oh, let's call it PI for projection. So you see, this is the projection parts of the cone. So far, we've got the data which tells us we've got a vertex U. And for every object D of I in our diagram, we have a morphism going down to it, which is the projection. Now, we're missing the commuting condition. Right, but we've got a naturality condition here. We've run out of space. Ah, ah, uh, never mind. Such that. So now we've got to say for all morphisms in the category that we started with. So for all morphisms, uh, what should I call them? F from I to I prime in our shape category, we've got to have something commuting. So this is a naturality square. We've got to have this at I going along the top. We've got to have this at I primed going along the bottom. So this is the other projection of, at I prime. Is that, is that legible? This is D of I prime. And then down here, we've got to take our map F. Right. This is just the usual definition of the natural transformation. This is the naturality square. So you've got D of F coming down the right. And we've got to have this of f coming down the left. But remember, all f's go to the identity. So this is just the identity, right? So this naturality square is actually secretly a triangle, OK? It's exactly the triangle that we need to say that this is really a cone. And we've got to have one of those triangles commuting for every single morphism in our diagram, which is exactly what we said that a cone was. So a cone with vertex u is indeed a natural transformation from here to here. And the naturality condition cleverly encodes the commuting conditions of the cone. So what we'll do next time is we'll show how to identify universal cones, that is, limits over the diagram D.